For over three years, a large Danish-led group of scientists from 14 European universities has researched, dissected and discussed such issues as what will the agriculture of the future be like and what will Europeans be eating in 10 years' time. In this series of documentaries, we have followed in the footsteps of the researchers and focused on the upheavals that will change rural life forever. For the past hundred years, Denmark has been one of the world's largest exporters of pork. But something is wrong. I don't buy Danish bacon because I know that their, their conditions are not as good as some of the English ones. Consumers are making ever greater demands. They always ask how it was housed, as it's seen the fresh air. And regulations grow ever more stringent. This is the signing, it's very, very important. It can cost 3,000 per stück. It's such a municipal thing. I think it's completely a spill of time. And production costs keep rising, putting pressure on farmers. We are in the mood. Is the solution then to move pork production out of countries such as Denmark? There is no one in Denmark that has a farm with 30,000 seedplants. That is a big advantage you can't get in Denmark. Or should we believe the scientists and focus on something entirely different? It can, for example, be a grass that goes out in the garden i pileplantager, som vi også kan bruge til at lave energi af. Will there actually be a place for pork production in 2020? Preben Baller is busy. For the past weeks, he's been working almost round the clock. He's a pig farmer in northern Jutland and is only too well aware of the crisis in pork production but this 50-year-old farmer refuses to give up. So he has to struggle and toil. But the question is, will hard work alone be enough? The last two or three years, we have lost about 5-6 million. It's in this low. Og det er på nedskrivninger, og det er på, uh, ja, på direkte underskud i, i, uh, i produktionen. Preben has done his best to optimize the efficiency of his production in every conceivable way. For example, this ultramodern tractor, which almost drives itself. Vi styrer den selv efter GPS'en nu. Så prøv at se, hvor lige den kan føre bagved. Det er helt lige. But what good is this? If things don't soon change for the better, Preben Baller will be the next Danish pig farmer to lose his livelihood. Indtil videre har vi jo haft værdier sådan, at bank og realkredit egentlig var indstillet på, at vi skulle holde sovnvande, men man kan også lige så godt sige, at det er sådan noget, det var jo evighed. For Preben, there's only one thing left to do. Der er jo ingen diskussion om, at der er vejen ud af, at det er, at vi skal have lidt bedre priser for tingene, for så kommer det helt af sig selv. Så kommer vi til at tjene nogle penge igen, og så bankeren, så får de også lidt af optimismen inden for landbruget tilbage. Preben Baller's parents were also farmers. In their time, agriculture was a good business and the future looked bright. So Preben had no doubts about following in his parents' footsteps. Det er sådan set bare været min interesse at se en overdring og blive landmand. Så blev det sådan. Det er der egentlig alt som røg at hudt lige hudt over. But the mood at morning coffee is not as cheerful as it once was. Though Preben still keeps up the family tradition. Yeah, but it's always good to meet and talk about what the English do. So we know all what we do. And it's that time of social day, and so we're over it. Among Preben Bella's biggest problems are his customers. That is to say, we consumers. De forlanger jo reelt ind imellem en kvalitet, som de så også reelt er parat til at betale for, kan man sige. Der er jo grænser for, hvis de bliver spurgt på tv, om, om de vil betale for, for så vil alle jo betale. Og når man så ser, hvad de hugger i indkøbsvognen, når de kommer hen i supermarkedet, så er de taget det billige slaske kød fra Tyskland, de overhovedet kunne få fat på. British consumers in particular have been responsible for making pork products popular. For many years, Danish bacon was known in Britain as being among the best in the world. 
But now, many British consumers have banned Danish pork products from their dining tables. I don't buy Danish bacon because I know that their, their conditions are not as good as some of the English ones, as far as I know. Seeing some of the things on the television, <clears throat> it's quite disturbing. Got quite a strong opinion on, on animal welfare. The RSPCA is one of Britain's largest animal welfare organisations. Here, Kate Parks conducts research into pig welfare. I think the main way um, the British people have tried to improve sort of pig welfare in particular is through their purchasing decisions, so what products they decide to buy. Uh, I think it's a really, really powerful tool as well because it's quite a quick tool. You know, if people want to buy a certain product, then hopefully the supermarkets will stock the product um, and the farmers will produce it. Even the small local British abattoirs have noticed that customers are getting more and more demanding. They always ask where it's come from, how it was housed, as it's seen the fresh air, is it free range? There we are, all homemade in the shop. Lovely. But stringent demands from customers are nothing new in Britain. And British consumers have always been adept at influencing legal requirements. The first laws that we had in this country looking at animal welfare um, were put in place in 1822. So I think we've always had this kind of long um, understanding of sort of animals and had an empathy towards them. If I'll buy, I'll make sure that it's um, the animal was raised, you know, in fairly good condition. I've seen programmes on television here where we have the farms here where their pigs are allowed to actually dig into the ground, that kind of stuff. We've had a couple of um, TV programmes in this country, particularly in the last two years, um, and they have sort of tried to highlight the difference between standards in the UK and the rest of Europe. So they have focused and tried to tell people about the fact we don't have style stores in this country and the rest of Europe does, and about how we don't castrate in this country, although legally we can, but we don't. The demanding British consumers are not just refusing to buy as much Danish pork, they've also been successful in influencing EU regulations, with considerable consequences for pig farmers, such as Pribenbella in Denmark. After strong objections from consumers, the EU has now introduced new requirements for pig styes. From 2013 onwards, all sows must now be able to move about freely. Preben must rebuild if he wants to continue as a pig farmer. This requires a lot of investment, including paying for a 60-page environmental report. Preben must get on with his next job. Tough consumer requirements don't stop with environmental reports and freedom of movement for sows. Every day, Preben and his workers must complete all kinds of documents and forms to comply with all the regulations. Vi skal gå og notere nogle ting ned, som er fuldstændig unødvendige. Vi skal blandt andet notere vores elforbrug ned, vi skal notere vores vandforbrug ned. Men det her, det er den daglige registrering. Sanctions are heavy if the regulations are not followed to the letter, for example with regard to the medication of pigs. Det der udsignering, du, den er meget, meget vigtig. Den kan koste 3.000 per stykke. Det er sådan en myndighedsting. Det er lige ved at være det største teori, man kan lave. Det tager den der. Og det er mere fordi bøderne, de er simpelthen så helt vilde i forhold til forbrydelsen. Så det er, altså det, det, og, og det undrer mig samtidig, at det her det er lige så vigtigt som så meget andet. Men det er, det, det er sådan, det fungerer. Øh, med det, vi skal notere op, så er der sådan faktisk nogle timers notering i løbet af en uge, øh, for at få det her til at rulle. Det kan høre hele sporet. Det er det dyrst, vi kan foretage os. Vi må hellere gå ind og slå ind i el, inden vi må. Det er bedre. <laughs> det er helt vildt. Jeg synes, det er fuldstændig spild af tid. Og, så, og, og skrive noget op, som, som man er reelt ved, ved to klik eller en telefonopringning kan finde ud af. 
In Brussels, nearly a thousand kilometers from Prebenbeller's farm, five researchers are at work. They're concerned about the future for pigs and about the future of farmers like Preben in Denmark. It, it doesn't get an 80-page manual uh, just, uh, just for the fun of it. I mean, there is a reason why. And, and the reason is that society has some interest in this. They have not only an interest in the, in the pork of, uh, that he's producing, they also have an interest in the, uh, in the environment, the uh, that, uh, that all of the side effects associated with it. Uh, and of course also whether it's safe to eat and, and all of that. But right now, it's not EU directives that worry Preben most. There's still a lot of work to be done on the farm. So the bureaucracy must wait, and the papers pile up. Det hele kontoret. Det kontoret indtil videre. Det får lov til at ligge ind til vi tidsæt. Simpelthen. Sådan er det. Der er fået også to regninger, der skal sendes ud og sådan noget. Så der er lidt af hvert. Nej, det er det tager vi altså tungt lige nu. Nu er det faktisk sådan, at grunden til at blive landmand, det er fordi jeg kunne tænke mig at gå ud og, og se på tingene. Og det her sidde ved skrivebordet, det, vil jeg godt, det, er, det er der mange, der synes, det er at være moderne landmænd, og det må det gerne være for mig, men uh, det er jo det, jeg starter med. Så derfor er det, at det er min største lyst. Uh, skrivebordet, det kommer uh, altid i første række. In Brussels, the research panel are in no doubt that Preben Banner has to cope with his growing administrative burden. He should employ somebody that could manage it, <laughs> because I don't think there is any way out. Have to put that price maybe a secretary. <laughs> a secretary, maybe. But, needs to put, but can he afford this? Well, I would say he has to. Yeah. I, I guess he's been allowed to expand his production, but it comes at a condition. Hello, Daniel. How are you? While things have got increasingly tough for ordinary farmers, a new type of pig farmer has appeared on the Danish market. So that's 1,200 hectares, ungefähr. Yeah. Not far from Prebenballer's farm, a modern pig farmer, Christian Knowles, is at work. He has nothing against paperwork. My background is that I'm an academy economist. I'm an academist in a company that currently works with food. So I'm not a strong landbrugs background. Today, Christian Norse will be visiting one of his six Danish farms, but he doesn't often actually go into the styes. Also, I'm nok 10% in the stall and in the market, and 90% on the counter. It's not my best competence. It's never been. It's not my best skill. It's a traditional little landbrug. We've bought, I think, 20 hectares. The drift building and the time span, we've taken down, and we've actually put a new one moderne anlæg her. Vi vil kun arbejde i nogle rationelle lokaler. Christian runs his pig production through a holding company, of which he is the director. Goddag. Velkommen. Velkommen. For employees in Denmark, there's no doubt that the farming of Christian Norse represents the future. Jamen altså, det her, det er jo up to date. Det er jo, øh, øh, hvad skal man sige, det bliver næsten ikke større i Danmark. Øh, så derfor er det også spændende og udfordrende øh, at være på så stor måde. Og være en del af så stort et en bedrift. Det er slut med der, hvor øh, den, den lille husmand, han går med sig selv. Øh, og her, der har, kan vi trods alt øh, supplere hinanden og <laughs> holde fri os. But the question is, whether there is any future at all for pork production in Denmark. Christian Norris holds out little hope. Som, som, som verden ser ud i dag, øh, så, så, øh, så er det svære vilkår øh, for svineproducenter i Danmark på alle måder. Altså, det er kun modvendt. Det danske samfund har ikke noget brændende varmt ønske om at, øh, at se svineproducenterne udvikle sig øh, i det danske landskab. And the five researchers in Brussels think he's right. Those farmers who are, who, where we could think of they are clever enough to cope even with more tighter rules, will leave the regions and this stupid 
farmers or the the less flexible farmers <laughs> who are who are not so mobile they remain there and they yeah, they stop they will they stick to the rules and maybe their sons and daughters decide not to continue farming anymore but so this is also kind of pro a, a pro um a process of agricultural change Preben Baller knows only too well what people think of pork production, especially in the spring when the slurry is spread on the fields. Good relations with the neighbors are needed. Vi går der ned og blander os i lokalt samfund. Det gør jo at de lærer at kende mig som andre når lige ham med gyllevognen, og det kan måske være meget rart. Men vi skal have det ud her for året, og det vi kan gøre, det er at vi kan forsøge at gøre det hurtigst muligt. Det er den ene ting, og så kan vi jo forsøge at gøre det i en tid hvor det måske lige er stoppet med kompensation og fødselsdag. Gården lå jo her i sin tid, og der, så byggede man jo så bare ind i byen, hvor den lå før. Men der tænkte man jo over, at det på sigt kunne give nogle scener, som der var ingen, der var interesseret i og sådan noget. If, if the rules become more and more tight, farmers become more and more mobile, and they simply will leave the region Yeah. where they currently produce and they just say bye bye i'm leaving and for but, some... but they take the they know how with them exactly okay. <laughs> christian knows is doing what the researchers recommend he is looking outward in an effort to make pork production a viable business, he's buying up farms in Slovakia. We have in our business set us down and made a long-term strategy. And have difficult to see how we should develop our business in Denmark. So we have looked around in Europe and seen where there is a possibility for to create a more economically sustainable production. And there fell our attention to Slovakia. Today, Christian Norse and his three partners are the second largest pork producers in Slovakia, with an annual output of 130,000 pigs from seven farms. It was much easier here than it was in Ungarn and Czech, and we were very welcome. So we had meetings with the Premier Minister and the Landbrugs Minister at that time. It was easy for today, if you were there. So it was not long to the top. And the foreign investments were welcome. So it was one of the things in Slovakia, Christian Norse has the opportunity to run production on a large scale, but for this he and his partners have to invest in more farms. Christian will inspect these while he's in Slovakia. The most important one is a disused farm, which you must now prepare for large-scale production. We have a woman who and in and Production on this scale would not be possible in Denmark. <laughs> Hello. 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 Og der kan man producere cirka 200.000 grise om året, ikke? Det er røvekøb. Prøv at se her. Super! Det er tomme lofter. Det er bare i orden. Vi har købt det handlæg for cirka 10 millioner. Dengang det blev bygget, har økonomi ikke spillet en rolle. Det har ikke betydet noget, hvad det koster. Jamen, vi skal renovere. De to, de to der, vi har et anlæg mere, der skal renoveres for 250 millioner. Det her det er, det er noget af det allerbedste, vi har købt. Øh, rent faktisk. Altså, altså, jeg ser nogle fantastiske rammer. Modsat Danmark har man altid tænkt, når man tænkte landbrug, så har man tænkt øh, industri og industrielt. Så der har man øh, fremælsket store enheder. Hvor i Danmark er det lige omvendt, der har man fremælsket små enheder og havde de store enheder.
Jeg er ude at se slagsvinanlæg hernede, vi er ved at have tømt ud for gamle inventar. Der er ikke nogen i Danmark, der har et anlæg med 30.000 stipladser, hvor du kan lave så mange gris. Hvor du kan lave 100.000, 120.000 gris. Altså, den store fordel øh, kan du ikke få i Danmark. Det er jo nogle fantastisk flotte bygninger. I Danmark kan du lave 2.000 stipladser. Det er jo det, man har besluttet politisk per enhed. The five researchers have no doubt that in the future consumers will be buying Christian Norse mass-produced pork. I think we will face consumers who are, in some cases, have a splitted personality of the, of high awareness, but in their economic decisions, what is bought is a different decision. So we, and I think this will continue. Today should be a day of celebration for Preben Bella in Denmark. His pigs are going to be slaughtered. Where where are you going, man? Herning. Okay, so they will herning. However, over the past 10 years, increasing production costs and falling pork prices have made things difficult for Danish farmers. Things were very different when Preben started pig farming. Jamen, det var nok faktisk en bedre forretning per gris, end det er i dag, eller per kilo kød. Det er der ingen tvivl om. Der var jo fodermester et sted, hvor at manden kunne huske, at i 1953 tjente han 100 kroner på slagtesvin, og det skal vi da være lidt dygtige for at gøre i dag, blandt andet. Ja, de gider rigtig godt derind. Det er for godt værd. Det siger jo lidt om, når man så tænker på omkostningsniveauet i 53 kontra i dag, at der skal sagt hus med nogle gris til for at forrente det, vi har. Det var det. Har du fuldt læs, så? Ja. Nå, det er bare fint. Det var godt. Det er jo kun mig, der har oplevet den her gris. Alle har prøvet det, og det, det, er, det er for børn. Det er det altså. In Slovakia, pork prices are higher than in Denmark, and this is one of the reasons why Christian Norse is investing millions of Danish kroner in new styles. Vi kan opnå nogle store fordele. Etableringsomkostningerne er lavere, og Slovakiet har et, 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 et er underforsynet af svinekød. Det vil sige, at de importerer svinekød fra deres naboer, og der kan man opbevare op til 20 procent højere notering. However, since Slovakia is an EU member state, Christian must work to exactly the same regulations as in Denmark. Vi har løsgående søger, vi har, øh, har gyldeopbevaring i op til ni måneder, ligesom vi har i Danmark. Vi må ikke sprede mere gylde per hektar, end vi, vi må tværtimod ind i Danmark. In Denmark, the vet has come to make an inspection. Jeg har lavet en dyrlægeklæring til The vet must check that Preben Bala is abiding by EU regulations, regulations that will ensure increased animal welfare and food safety. Har de her gris haft diarré? Nej. Der er lige været nogle enkelte stier, der er kommet en bitte smule ind, men... But these rules also mean even more administration for Preben Bala. Altså udfordringen i dag, det er jo at producere på et højt effektivitetsniveau, og så samtidig skåne dyren så meget som muligt. Det er jo udfordringen hele tiden. Og der har været 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 støde. The vet inspects every element of production in minute detail. Fortunately, Pipenballers farm meets every requirement. Hallo, Peter. Hvor er det? In Slovakia, Christian Norse controls his pig production from a small office with 12 administrative staff. Katastrofe. Ich muss dir etwas zeigen, das du musst sehen. Das war 100 Jahre nicht hier. So viel was. This is schon zwei Wochen. Today, the mood in the office is tense. The fields that should be providing food for the pigs are flooded after several weeks of heavy rain. I går brød en stor flod. Øh, øh, den, den, den gik der hold på, og det løb ud øh, på en del af vores marker. Suddenly, Christian Norse is facing huge financial problems. Det er, det er voldsomme mængder på over kort, over kort tid. 
Øh, Daniels netværk er rigtig stærkt i Slovakiet, så det lykkedes ham faktisk at få premierministeren ud og øh, se på skaderne, ikke kun hos os, men også hos nogle andre. Der vil komme en form for kompensation på de marker, øh, hvor, hvor, hvor skaderne er størst. Så. De, øh, det, det er jo vejen. Så vi kan ikke komme igennem. Det er vejen ind til det, det er byen, der ligger der. Man har politikerne med sig jo. Det er jo ikke noget, vi er vant til fra Danmark af. Og så der, der arbejdes der jo på at lukke landbruget hernede. Der arbejder man på at udvikle det. Og det er jo egentlig utroligt positivt. Like many other Danish farmers, Preben Baller is trying to ensure his future survival. Der har vi vores økologiske hestebønder til at ligge. De ligger lige her. He's diversifying. Protein får jeg til til økokultur. Hopefully, this will enable him to rectify his financial situation. Det er med at sprede sig lidt, fordi så det behøver at gå skidt alt sammen. Så må der være noget af det, der går godt også. Produktionsresultaterne ude. De er OK. Så er den del, vi står for, så er den i hvert fald, som den skal være. At så priserne er med os, det er vi nødt til at sige, så det kan vi ikke gøre noget ved. Vi regnede med, at, at, at vi kunne godt nære de der danskere til at give lidt ekstra penge for, det kniver jo så lidt ind imellem. Jamen nærtårn, de er jo så kommet op. Så spieren, de er igen. While Preben Baller hopes for better times in Denmark, Christian Norse works in a completely different way. Juli, august eller så, ja. Vi tror ikke, vi kan blive ved med bare at sidde på, på hænderne og vente på, at, at noteringen den stiger. Fordi det, det er da ikke lige umiddelbart noget, der, der siger os, at, at det bare kan ske over natten. Altså, fordi det har været dårligt tre år, så er der ingen, der lover os, at vi får tre gode år. Så hvis det fortsætter i det spor, vi kører nu, så forsvinder al svineproduktion i Danmark inden 2020. Det er jeg stensikker på. In the kitchen, Preben Baller's mother has prepared morning coffee, as she's done so many times before. Though now, unsure whether in 10 years time, they'll be in the same kitchen with the next generation. We have a son, Morten, and if he could be interested in being interested, it could be hard to say. Let's say that I think the conditions for it should be a little better, so that he could hop in for it. One of the researchers from Brussels is Danish, Jørn E. Olsen. He sees two possible causes for the future of pork production. Det er den der industrialiserede bror, vi har. Høj effektive produktioner, hvor der også er folk til at håndtere alt det administrative og sørge for, at det nu kører som det skal. Men jeg tror også, at der er og i stigende grad vil blive plads til det, som virkelig er naturkærligt. Vi kunne i dansk svineproduktion sige, at vi er altså umådeligt meget bedre på det miljømæssige, på klima og så videre, med det kød, vi producerer, end andre. Hvem siger så, at vi ikke kunne få en bedre pris for vores varer? Jeg tror, det er der, vi skal hen. Ellers dør dansk svineproduktion.